systems have a life of their own. To put it differently, they work perfectly according to their underlying structure. Whether this operation is beneficial, detrimental, healthy or unhealthy, and for whom, it is a different question. Understanding this underlying structure is essential if we want to influence the behavior of the system. You might be familiar with the story of the Titanic. A crucial factor in the tragic crash was that the crew saw the iceberg too late. Only a tiny part of the iceberg, a tip, was visible above the water, while underwater it spread much wider, resulting in the death of many. This metaphor can be applied to complex systems as well. Let's take the example of hunger. On the surface level, or event level, we might notice that there are a lot of people begging for food on the street, or that there are long lines in front of food banks. At this level, we notice symptoms, occurrences that happen in the present. Then we go one layer deeper to the level of trends and patterns. To understand larger trends, we can ask the question, what has been happening over time? At this level, we can observe events that happen over and over again. We look back in time and see what has happened and make predictions for the future based on that. For example, we might notice that the number of people asking for food on the streets grows or the lines in front of the food banks lengthen when the economy weakens, but they never completely disappear. Or we might look at how the number of people with malnutrition-related diseases changes over time. If we descend even deeper, we arrive at the level of system structure. At this level, we are trying to figure out the root causes behind symptoms and patterns. Many of the tools that we are learning in this course, such as systems mapping or feedback loops, are actually working at this level. Going back to our example, at this level, we are trying to uncover how hunger is influenced by various social issues, the overall level of poverty, or the unpredictable weather conditions caused by climate change. At this level, we are also able to discover how seemingly unconnected issues can influence each other, such as in our previous example on biofuels. Finally, we arrive at the level of mental models. Mental models describe the ways that we see our world and ourselves. They are the compound of our beliefs and values and are mostly unconscious. Some pointers on the way of uncovering mental models can be sentences like these are the ways we do things around here, or it is just common sense. At this level, we ask what beliefs keep the system in place. Going back to our example, various mental models can contribute to the issue of hunger, such as poverty is a personal choice, or uh, food is a commodity that we buy, or hunger is something that will always be around. Becoming aware of our individual and collective mental models is not only important when we are trying to make positive social change or intervene in a complex and dynamic system. These unconscious beliefs that we have picked up in our family, school or other social context influence every area of our life, from our interpersonal relationships to how much money we are making. Mental models can be quite diverse. A system can appear very different depending on where we are looking at it. This is why creating shared spaces for real dialogue and practicing active listening are so important when we are trying to understand the system. Various participatory and co-creative processes can be helpful in this not only in identifying the differences in the mental models, but also uncovering the shared mental models and uh, the shared visions that we have. It makes a world of difference whether we live according to a model of interconnectedness or a model of isolation. To be able to consciously choose what kind of world we want to co-create, first, we may need to become aware of our values, ideas and beliefs that drive our behavior. And then we can decide whether we want to keep them.